Hi, it's James Taylor here. I was talking to my good friend Austin Hill Shaw, who's a great writer around the link between mindfulness and creativity. And it got me thinking, can some kind of mindfulness practice or meditation practice increase our levels of creativity? I wanna show you a very simple little experiment that you can try at home to kind of see if mindfulness practice may be useful for you with your whatever your creative work is. So why might there be a link between mindfulness and some kind of mindfulness practice and creativity? Well, the first thing is that often when we see uh, people getting stuck in their creativity, it's because they've become a little bit inflexible at the way that they've been looking at a problem, or they're perhaps looking just down at something from one particular perspective. And something that mindfulness practice can do is it kind of help us open up and look at things from multiple different perspectives. It starts to increase a level of flexibility of mind as well. So that's the, the first part. Now there's a great academic called Langer who goes into this in much more depth and has done some incredible studies, especially with children and mindfulness practice and creativity as well. But I'm not gonna go into that just now. I'm gonna show you a very simple experiment that you can try for yourself. Um, and a lot of it comes from this idea of, in, in America there's a, uh, a school called D-School, which is part of Stanford University. And it looks at things from, uh, looks at problems and creative problems from a design thinking, a, de a design perspective. Now, what's interesting about looking at things from a design way of thinking is that you suddenly have to look at things from multiple perspectives. You cannot just look at things in one particular way or go in one particular direction. Now, here's the little experiment I'd like you to, to try at home. And this is to kind of get flexibility of mind for you uh, around creativity. And, and this is something, it's, a, it's essentially a very, very simple mindfulness uh, little exercise. And it involves this. This is a raisin. <laughs> Uh, it's called the raisin exercise and, and what I want you to do is just get your average uh, raisin and first of all before you uh, even pop it in your mouth and eat it I want you to spend uh, a couple of minutes just looking at the raisin and just kind of looking around it seeing the, the, the texture of it feeling it you know on, in your fingers what does it feel like the color if you can notice anything, you know that what the the you know does it feel kind of it's got that kind of squishy feel, feel that as well. And then when you pop it in your mouth, don't immediately swallow the raisin. Spend another three, four, five minutes just the sensation of the raisin in your mouth, and start to feel how does it feel in the tongue. How does the raisin feel in the tongue? How, what is the texture? What is the taste that you're feeling? Is there a, a smell that's kind of coming up uh, that you can start to experience as well? How does it feel in the teeth when you start to chew the raisin now? So after a couple of minutes, start chewing the raisin. What, that's got obviously going to release a whole bunch of different smells and scents and juices as well. What does that feel like as well? And then finally, after you know, 10 minutes, swallow the raisin and what does that feel like as well, what kind of sensations, what kind of smells are kind of coming there. The point of this is, is that it will allow you to perceive something very, very simple, the common raisin, from multiple perspectives. And something that you may have just thought was purely a taste thing, you can actually start to experience some of the other sensations, the other categories of things around that. Now, that's a very simple mindfulness exercise. And I think if you're going into other creative challenges that you have just now, maybe you're a writer who's working on a script just now and is stuck on a particular problem, maybe it's a character development issue, or maybe you're a songwriter and you're stuck on a particular lyric and you, you, you need to find a different way to approach it, or you're an entrepreneur and you have an idea but there's, there's, there's a block there somewhere and you're not quite sure the best way to kind of get over this challenge. Think about that raisin exercise and think, uh, kind of use your mind and use some kind of mindfulness practice to, uh, to assess the, this creative problem that you have from different angles and from different perspectives. So that's uh, my thoughts on mindfulness and creativity and a very simple exercise with a the, the, with the raisin exercise. I would love to get your thoughts on it. Please leave your comments below. If you're not watching this at jamestaylor.me, please go to there and leave your comments on, on the post itself. Thanks for watching. Hi, it's James here. Did you enjoy that episode? If so, there's two things that we can do to continue the journey together. Firstly, I would love if you were to subscribe, give us five stars and leave a comment. Secondly, if you go to jamestaylor.me and enter your name and email address, I'm going to send you some free goodies all around creativity and innovation. Look forward to continuing the journey together.